What's up, guys? Welcome in to another edition of a live Q&A sesh with a little bit of topic mixed in there. Um, for those of you watching live, I apologize for now being 18 minutes late. Usually I'm a few minutes late because I'm tweaking with getting my computer set up, the light, all that kind of crap. Um, I had a legit reason for being uh, way, way later today. So I listed a bunch of shoes a couple of days ago. Usually I do two day handling I, and I completely spaced. I did one day handling. So I just happened to open up the eBay account and I saw that they had to be out today. This was at 4.45 and I start this show at five. So I've been hustling to get all these shoes out. I just dropped them off at the post office. Fortunately, we literally are walking distance across the street from the post office. So, man, I'm a... I'm sweating now. It's freaking hot. So with that being said, welcome to another live show. I have definitely been out a while. I've not put up any videos since the last stream we did. Jeez, I think that was two weeks ago. Um, it's been cray cray around here. Definitely been cray cray. But if you guys watch Instagram, um, and if you're not on Instagram, just look up the Side Hustle Network. You'll see us up there. That's where I've been posting a lot just daily behind the scenes stuff. Um, so I've been, that's kind of like our daily vlog, uh, if you will, because I've tried to do <laughs> the daily vlogging here on YouTube, but uh, between carrying around my, it's not a huge camera, but for me to carry this thing around with me everywhere and every five minutes have to do clips, um, it's just so much easier to do with my phone. So, um, yeah, the YouTube vlogs, we're getting back into them, but it's probably going to be one episode per week. It's not going to be a daily thing. Um, I did make it to the post office in time, like by that much. So I'm literally sweating right now, <laughs> but we'll roll with it. So tell me how your guys' day is going. Um, but aside from like the last minute craziness, getting those shoes shipped out and being late to my own show, uh, it's been a phenomenal week so far. I know it's only Tuesday, but even like all last week leading into this week, it's just been phenomenal. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, really, really productive stuff going on. Cooling down at the gym, nice. I got in uh, my squat cleans this morning. If you guys saw on Instagram, those things are freaking brutal every single time. <laughs> um, but aside from that, um, Trista is not here with us, unfortunately. She um, she <laughs> she she took a dose of Mucinex and it completely just wiped her out. Usually, it gives her that surge of energy, but I think the whole pregnancy thing. Um, she took the proper dose that, that she was supposed to take, but for some reason it just messed with her. So, uh, she's hanging at home with little man. So y'all are stuck with me for the next hour. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's, uh, let's dive in, shall we? We'll do kind of what we did last time, kind of bring a topic to the table. Um, and this just based on what we've been seeing over the last probably like six weeks is our not on the electronics account because we just started hammering more listings onto the electronics account so that one's now starting to grow but we have been seeing crazy growth um, between 60 and 80 percent um it, it fluctuates but you guys know where we'll show you your increase um for for the last 30 days versus the previous 30 days um that's been fluctuating between 60 and 80 percent for the last almost two months um and that's that's came down to a few different things I want to talk about, which has really helped us out. And it's all basic stuff you guys have heard before. But I'm telling you, if you just sit down and actually do the stuff, it works. Um, so it's been it's been really helping us out. So this uh, eBay account we're talking about is going to be primarily shoes and clothing um, is what we've been doing for that. Uh, what's up, Seattle? Where's everyone watching from tonight? We haven't asked that question in a while. I love that everyone from all different places is is on here watching these these live shows. It's fantastic. Um, side side thing. Oh, my computer screen's just completely glitched. Hold, I'm sure you guys can still see me. My dual monitors. I'm USB connection is no bueno. Uh, my dual monitors keep like cutting out. So hopefully I'm still still streaming okay for you guys. Um, stay tuned to the channel coming by friday is my goal i'm working on the logistics of getting this thing up and going because it's a beast of a thing to tackle but we got let me pull it up i 
We got something in the mail. And I've been waiting for this. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta see how I could do this. All right, block, block out some stuff. We have the YouTube 100,000 subscriber plaque in my hands, and I want to open this thing so bad, but I'm not going to open it yet. On by Friday, there's going to be a video. I'm going to unbox this thing. It's going to have a nice sweet spot right up there in the background. We are doing an epic giveaway. We have got a ton of sponsors that are giving some amazing prizes in this thing. Um, and this is just reflection. Like everyone always sees the YouTube plaque and they're like, oh, congratulations, Chaz. Like I appreciate it. I get that I started the channel and I put in a lot of work to build this thing. But ultimately this is a reflection of you guys. So um, we're bringing together a ton of sponsors with some incredible prizes. There's going to be a lot of stuff given away. So stay tuned for that video. It's gonna drop by Friday. And um, it's gonna be pretty simple. You guys have all been in give giveaways before. You're gonna um, you know, go subscribe to an email list, all that kind of stuff, get entered to win. And um, I'm not sure how many, pri I think there's 20. I don't have my tab pulled up. I think there's about 20 different prizes for you guys. It's gonna be phenomenal. So stay tuned by Friday. That video should be dropped and I'm gonna give everyone one week to enter. So don't worry, you're not gonna miss it. Um, by Friday, if you want to be pretty much first come, <laughs> first serve on that. Uh, if you want to be one of the first ones in, then then stay tuned for that. But let's dive in. All right, so it did freeze when it glitched. So hopefully it won't do that again. We'll keep we'll keep rolling. So topic of the day is how we have increased our sales on eBay. <laughs> Rob said when I open it, I have to say, boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Uh, so we'll we'll dive into the topic of the video because some people don't like the Q&A session, the kind of chill back and relax session. Totally fine. So we're going to do the bulk of the topic first. We're going to give up my three main tips. Of course, there's more to it, but there's, there's three main things that we've been doing and implementing on our eBay account to be able to get, get that thing to grow. Um, so we're creeping up on a 5K uh, we've both been hammering at this thing. So we want it to be at a 5K in 30 days uh, for sales is what we're focusing on that. So number one thing that we started doing, and we started doing this a few months ago, but of course, anytime you start something new, it's gonna, there's, there's a delay. It's going to take some time for momentum to build up. And I think that's something I struggled with in the past was I would hear these tips about how to increase your eBay sales. So I would sit down and I would start to do them for a few weeks and it wouldn't work. So I would just quit doing it because I didn't see that immediate satisfaction, the instant gratification out of it. And I've learned from seeing it firsthand now, it's going to take time. You've got to give it three, four, five, six weeks to see that snowball start to take effect. So if you implement any of these tips, you know, don't message me in a week and be like, hey, Chaz, I started doing these things and it's not working. Like you got to give it time and you have to stay consistent with it. Number one is we started cherry picking our items. We stopped buying crap just because it was cheap. <laughs> How many people can be guilty of that, by the way? Uh, give me an emoji or something in the chat. I, I spent so much time just buying stuff because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's only a dollar. I can at least sell it for 20. And then it would be freaking sitting on a shelf for months on end. Uh, so I know we're all guilty of that. So stop buying stuff just because it's cheap. Okay, it's we're in the we're in the supply and demand game here. So you've got to buy stuff that unless side note, unless you are dealing with vintage, antique, something collectors items, something that doesn't sell often, but those sell for a higher price. That's not going to be relative to you guys or relevant. So with this, it's cherry picking the stuff that one is showing data. Okay, so let's talk about VCRs because you know everyone knows I love to flip VCR combos. When I search VCRs, people are always on Instagram and they're always DMing me and they're asking questions like, how do you know which ones to buy? How do you know how much to sell it for? What average, what buy cost should I focus on? I'm I'm not doing anything special, guys. Every electronic, especially VCRs, they have a model number. You search that model number, you can look at the active listings and the sold listings or the completed listings, the comps. And what you're going to do is you're going to look for products that show that they're selling multiple times a month or even once a month. If you get a crazy good deal on a VCR for $5 and it sells once a month for a hundred, hell yeah, go on that. 
but I'm looking for products that are selling multiple times a month. I'm not trying to buy stuff just because it's five bucks. So if I see a VCR, I'm not gonna buy it just because it's five bucks. It might take three months to sell for 30. It's gonna cost me at least 20 bucks to ship that thing. I'm not gonna make a ton of money. So learn to cherry pick. And this is gonna be different for each of you because some of you are dealing with clothing. Some of you are dealing with electronics, vintage items, et cetera. So you've got to learn to cherry pick. And that can mean a couple different things. One, when I think about cherry picking, that's also raising my ASP, my average sell price. So if I have, if I used to have an average sell price of about $25 to $30, if I'm buying and selling cheap stuff all the time, there's nothing wrong with $25, $30, $30 sell price. But if I want to get to that 50 plus range, I've got to stop buying the cheap stuff and I've got to cherry pick the best um, that I possibly can. Number two, and again, these are just things I've been seeing and dealing with. I'm one person, one business model. So everyone in the chat, if you guys want to drop comments based on your own experience with these two or your own tips, feel free. Um, I want this to be more of like, this is a, this is a conversation going on, not just me yelling at a microphone. <laughs> so number one is cherry picking that hands down has been one of the, the best things that we start doing for our account. Number two, and uh, let me back up real quick. Trista sources primarily use clothing from the bins. Okay, so she pays by the pound. So her average cost is between like 60 and 70 cents per item when she's buying clothing. She used to come home and be like, oh my gosh, I found 150 pounds of clothes. But now when she goes out, she went out yesterday and she came back and she was so excited to hit 60 pounds because she cherry picked. So her average sale price has gone up from like $12 to now 20 plus because she's learned to cherry pick on that. Oh, that's awesome, Ryan. Uh, Ryan's over in Sherwood, just getting started on eBay. Love your content. That's amazing, man. I'm just south of you. I'm 30 minutes south of you, McMinnville. I go up and back and forth through uh, Sherwood. Uh, it used to be like four times a week. I'm not doing as much retail arbitrage anymore, so not not as much now, but it's definitely, um, I'm definitely familiar with Sherwood. All right, next up, number two, increasing the volume of listings per week. Now this can kind of go in, this goes hand in hand with being consistent with your listings. Cause we all, we, that's the number one thing we've all heard is you've got to be consistent with your listings, which is absolutely true. But I've noticed since we started focusing on a goal, like how many listings per week we're going to get done. Sometimes we upload a ton on Monday and then a ton on Thursday, and we still have seen an increase because over the week, the volume of work that's done has been greater um, than usual. So if you usually get you know 20 listings up per week, challenge yourself to get 30 or 40. You don't have to do this giant increase. I'm not going to tell you to go do 100 if that's just way out of your range. If you usually do 20, Try to do 30 next week and set that goal and set it as a minimum standard for yourself. Um, it's As long as you're picking good items, the more you're able to list, the more you're going to sell. Um, so that has been a huge one that we've done. And Tristan and I sit down, we're spouses, but you know we're also business partners. So we sit down every single Sunday night or Monday morning and we look at what our whole week looks like. And we talk about our goals. How many listings do we want to get up on the eBay accounts? Uh, we talk about Amazon sourcing. How much am I? How much should I be spending this week to source on Amazon? And we just talk about everything in the business. And setting those listing goals has been a huge priority for us. And I think that's another key reason why we've been able um, to see those in increases. And it doesn't take long. Like last night, I had it was like twelve minutes. I was getting ready to head out, and I thought, you know what? There's a what's this thing called a fluke? It's a fluke 87. Um, it's a little, uh, electronic tester. And I bought this thing for 60 bucks. It sells for between 180 and 220. So it's a sweet flip and it's been sitting there for days. And I literally, I put my backpack on to leave the office and I thought, Oh, I cannot let that sit there any longer. So I took my backpack off. I flipped the lights on, on the photography stand and I just, took a couple photos of it and I figured, you know what? The lights are on. I've got, and I just do all my photos right here, guys, all from my phone. 
So I figured I've got the lights on. I've, I've got my phone open. Let's see what I can do. And I ended up just cherry picking like six items off of our shelf. And I got all those photoed. And then I went home and boom, I just hammered out a few listings. And we had two of those items sold overnight. Those would have sat there for another week or two until my employee got to them. Because we've got this you know, constant pile of stuff that needs to be picked through. But that's all it took. And I got an easy extra six listings up because I was able to um, to just take a few extra minutes. And so that's all it is. It's just finding these little slots of time where you can squeeze in more listings. It really does help. And here's why I love taking photos from my phone. Because I've got a good camera. I love doing it from my phone. One, the phone, this is the XS Max. XS Max. It takes phenomenal photos. So not only that, but it's convenient because I'll take a backlog of photos whenever I have extra minutes and I see stuff that I can just quickly photo. I have a backlog, like a library of photos so that if I'm ever uh, like today, I went to go pick up my son from preschool and I had about 10 minutes to chill in the car outside of the school waiting for him to waiting for, you know, three o'clock for, for the doors to open. And so that was 10 minutes that I could be listing and I have that backlog of photos ready to go. So that's another thing too, is if you're short on time, you don't have to sit down and do it all in one shot. You don't have to take all your photos and then do all your listings, um, make all your drafts. You don't have to do all that in one shot. If you've got 20 minutes to spare this little window of time, how much can you photo in 20 minutes that you are able to then have a backlog that when you have another 20 minute slot open, okay, cool. I've got these photos. How many listings can I make now? And that's been a, a, a really, really good target for us to shoot for is to just increase how much we're listing per day, not per day, per week. All right. Do we have questions so far? Questions, comments. Y'all got some of your tips. Yeah, that's another huge tip too. I, I do this one uh, pretty often. Bang, bang a ton of listings out in one day, but schedule them to go live a few days throughout the week. Each additional listing you do is gravy. Absolutely. Um, so I, it's, it's funny that I use that same method. I call it batching. I've heard that many times, but it's called batching. And I do it in YouTube world. So when, I, well, not lately, but when I'm, when I'm hammering out YouTube videos, let's take the FBA for beginner series. Um, which by the way, it's still being edited. Uh, we've got five episodes that are currently in process of being edited. So they should be out. Um, I'm going to do the final reviews tonight. So I'll keep you posted on that. But anyways, those I'm not filming every day. They're, they're posting one per day, but I'm not filming every day. I'm taking a three or four hour chunk of time and I'm setting everything up perfectly with the camera and the lens and the light and all that stuff. And I'm batching all of those episodes in one day. I send it all to my editor. He edits all of them. And then I schedule them on YouTube to go auto lot to post um, automatically on YouTube as a scheduled post uh, throughout the week. And that's the same thing you could do with your eBay listings too. So if you know, I just did this, I threw this challenge out to somebody and this was over at uh, when Wade did the bowling alley meetup, there was somebody there who said they had thousands of items in a death pile and I challenged them and it was, it was a, it was a couple and I said, if you sat down, when I said, when's your next full day that you can work on this? And they said, Saturday. I said, cool. How many listings can you get done in one day if both of you hit this? Um, and they said 200. And they text me a couple days later and said they got to 150 listings in one day. And they can now schedule those to auto post throughout the next several weeks. Um, so if you have a full day that you can dedicate to it or a half day or a two hour slot, batching your listings like that can be a fantastic way to save time because then you're not going to worry about it throughout the week. I know people that Sunday is their main day off. They spend the first half of the day with family and then the whole last half of the day, they're just doing a crazy amount of drafts and, and listings and they're scheduling them to auto post throughout the week and they don't even think about it during, during the week. So there's all kinds of ways, um, all kinds of ways to do it. Uh, Max Profit said, I purchased today Sony TA1150 in great condition, $5. <laughs> so of course I'm going to rush, put that on eBay because it's pretty easy, 400 bucks. That's amazing. Um, yeah, anytime that you guys, and that, that also goes back to cherry picking because 
I definitely am guilty of, I let my lower end stuff just kind of like chill on a shelf. But if I've got higher end stuff, like that is absolutely priority because you got to look at what is going to affect your bottom dollar the most. So if you've got the $400 item, uh, list that first. Don't go for the $40 item. <laughs> That's another part of cherry picking too. I've definitely learned. Ooh, Annette said, I have a death room, even has Robert Graham, Vineyard Vines, just got an assistant listing is going to happen. I'm telling you, when you hire somebody to help you with listing, game changer. It's it, it's amazing. My guy Ryan had all last week off. I had to do all my own shipping. <laughs> I sound like such first world problems with this. I had to do all my own shipping. Um, I had to do all my own listings, my Amazon shipment, all of that to do myself again. Uh, but it, 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 it keeps, you, keeps you in the loop. But when you hire someone, it's it's a game changer. Like I, I can't go back to it. I do need a new computer chair. This thing is, um, this thing is my son peeled all the friggin' plastic part off. <laughs> we had that in a couple episodes ago. We showed you guys the whole chair set up. My son peels it off. I just told Trish that's actually on my list. I need to get a couple new chairs in here. All right. So number one was cherry picking. Number two is increasing the volume of listings per week, which of course will uh, turn into per month. Number three, the last big tip that I have that we've been doing is this is the one that I was stubborn on because I've heard it a thousand times and I've always been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally sat down and started doing it and it worked. It's fixing your titles and your images. So, and this is on typically older inventory stuff that's been sitting longer than you want. Go through and fix your titles. And I never understood in the beginning. So what does fix your titles mean? The way that search engines work, whether it's Google, eBay, Amazon, et cetera, they read from left to right. So if you have something, you want to typically put the brand and the model first. Your first like two words should be the brand or, or, or model. And of course, this is different because... Clothing doesn't have a model number, but sometimes they often have style codes. Um, but you don't want to be doing like, let's say Nike Air Max, uh, black and white size 10. I'm not going to do Nike size 10 men's Air Max uh, black and white. And that's how I used to do some of my listings because I didn't think it mattered. And then I went through and fixed them and put them in the right order because you guys have to put yourselves in the mind of, if you're a customer looking for this item, how, in which order are they typing in those words? That's how your title should be crafted is how somebody is actually searching for it. So if I'm a customer looking for these shoes, I'm going to type in Nike Air Max. Then I might put size 10 and then black and white. Okay. I typically lean towards putting the color towards the end. Um, and you know, not everyone can agree with that. That's totally fine. We all do it differently. But the biggest bullet point to drive home here was putting the brand or model uh, and model up front, okay, all the way to the left of that title, because you have to read from left to right. Think about how a customer is searching for these things. So the brand and the brand and the uh, model was definitely going to be the big, big one that I went through. And I just, I took, you know, half a day, went through both of our eBay accounts and I just started going to work on all of our shoes, the electronics. And I started fixing up these listings and making them look cleaner. I'm um, taking out some words that I just, I don't know why I put certain words in there. And um, with the same thing I was going through and like editing description. So if I felt like a description could have been, it, it would have looked better if I typed it out a different way then I would just do that. And then images. So images are, we've all heard how important images are. And it's funny because we always hear about the importance of images. And when I'm doing research, so if I have a pair of shoes I'm looking for, I'm like, okay, I got to have a pure white background. I got to make it look clean. I got to get the shoe stand, get the angle right. And then I see a sold comp of somebody's shoe like on a dirty carpet with a diaper in the background and it freaking sold. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. But photos are important. So the better you can make your photos look, uh, it's just going to help you overall. So anything that I felt like if I just would have angled it a different way, if I would have tried to make a more pure white background, not just like a, you know, a partial white background, if I would have taken the time to edit and adjust the contrast and the brightness, it would look better. So I went through and took the extra few minutes per listing that I needed to, to go through and edit all those photos. Or on some of our items, we retook the photos. 
we took items down, me and my guy Ryan, um, we took items down and we refotoed them because I felt that the cam the camera was too far away from the item because I want my I'm now, you know, kind of switching how we do our photos. I want the item to take up as much of the box as I can, you know, that that main display image. So anything that I felt was too distant, the item was too small. Sure, you can go in and crop it, but the problem is if you have got a certain resolution on, on, on your photo and you're taking a you're taking the photo this far away and you crop it, you're blowing up that resolution. It's not going to be as crystal clear. So anything that I felt was too far away, we pulled it back down, turned the lights on, put it back on the table, and we refotoed it up close. And that stuff started to sell. Um, and that's it. So those are my three main things that we've been doing over the last 60 days to increase our sales. And we're almost getting to the 5K for 30 days um, mark on that one account. Uh, so cherry picking, increasing the volume of listings that you're doing per week. I don't care if you do daily listing. I don't care. I'm, I'm not a fan of bulk uploading everything on one day because the search engine does like consistency. So you want to be consistent. So, you know, I'd say minimum, I'd say three days, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you're going to, if you're going to compile all your listings into three days, if you want to do twice a week, that's completely up to you. I would definitely recommend you go with three or four days. If you can try to just do what Rob mentioned earlier, which is do it in bulk. So you create all your drafts and post and try to get them to auto post uh, once every day. Number three, fix your titles and your images. A lot of this stuff is not hard to do. It's just tedious little stuff that you need to just start to implement. And I'm telling you, when you start to implement this stuff, because like I said, I've heard these tips a thousand times, like most of you guys just had to hear me repeat it again. But I'm telling you, when you sit down and actually take the time to do it and stay consistent doing this stuff, you're not going to see a big boom. Okay. Don't watch this and think, well, I'm going to have a 100% increase in my sales over the next 30 days. You're going to see incremental increases over time. And it's going to take several weeks for this stuff to start to work. But for those of you that sit down and put in the work, um, it's really going to help out. Uh, how do you do auto posts? So when in your draft, you're going to be able to see, um, try to think the exact drop down part where it's at. But when you scroll down, and you go to create your, your listing, you can do this drop down where you can schedule it to post. And it's not going to post now, it's going to schedule to post. So you can tell it, you know, tomorrow, 6am, I want you to post these five items. And that's how you do it there. What's up, John Tanner? Thank you so much for a super chat, my friend. So those are my tips, how to increase your sales, at least for the eBay side. Amazon, completely different ballgame over there. <laughs> Tonight was going to be a eBay focused topic for you. Yes, it does cost 10 cents to schedule. So make sure you wiggle that in your margin with it. So for those of you that are doing really high volume, very low margin flips, may not be the best idea for you. But for those of you that have great margins, especially like electronics, I mean, you buy stuff for $10, sell it for 100 you know, 10 cents, that's not going to affect you too much. But you guys got to know your numbers. But aside from that, um, pretty much open Q&A sesh for the next bit. All right, let me scroll back up, make sure. I'm looking to start Amazon. Could you do a video on how you list? Um, that will be coming up in module three. Got up my whiteboard. Yes, module three. Wait, maybe not. Sourcing the products. No, module four. Module four, I'm gonna be showing you guys workflow and how I use Inventory Lab. Uh, somebody asked why batch you don't have to batch. This is just for the people that maybe are short on time and they don't, they have a lot of stuff to get listed, but they don't have a lot of time every single day. If they've got a couple days a week where they've got several hours to spare, that's when they can batch all their stuff to then keep, keep their account going throughout the week. What's up? Jacob said, huge fan. I bought some large poly bags for items, but I put smaller items in the bag, then fold the poly bag with the tape to fit smaller item. Let me reread that. I bought some large poly bags for some items, but can I put smaller items in the bag and fold the poly bag with tape to fit the smaller item? Yes, you can.
eBay has been slow for me. Is there any changes on eBay? eBay is here. Here's the thing. These, these platforms we sell on, they, they're changing shit all the time. <laughs> it's never smooth sailing. It's, you know, this, that's part of it. If we're going to sell on their platforms, we have to take the punches and we have to, um, we have to just, we have to adapt the way that we're doing things all the time. So if you, if you're having slow eBay sales, the first thing I would ask is how many listings do you have up? Number two is what kind of products are you selling? And number three, the products that you are selling, did they show a history of sold comps? Because if you're buying stuff, like I said earlier, don't buy stuff just because it's a good deal. Cause you can go spend a hundred bucks on a whole storage unit, for example. But if there's nothing in there that's selling, right, you're going to be sitting on a bunch of stuff. I used to do that all the time. I'd walk into thrift stores and Goodwills and be like, oh my gosh, this VCR is $10. And then it would sit for three months. No matter how low I dropped the price, I ran promotions on it. Um, it would just never sell because it never had sold comps. I just bought it on a whim. And I guess that's kind of like bonus tip number four. I have been messing with promoted items. So I've been running 5% promoted across the board on all the items. And on the electronics account, I ran, and on some of my shoes I've been sitting for a while, I ran a 10% off sale and I did see a, a wave of sales come through from that. And I'm a fan of doing that because I feel like even though I'm not gonna be making as much profit on those items, it brings in a wave of sales. I don't know if it helps, but I feel like that almost like boosts somehow um, views that are coming into the store. Trista has done a similar method where she'll run an auction and she'll run a one week auction on like 50 items and she'll sell a lot of them for like a one or a $2 profit. But because of that, she has more sales throughout the whole week. So I have no idea how the algorithm works with a flood of views coming in like that, but I've seen it firsthand that it's worked out on her stuff too. Uh, John asked, when is my next class? Which class are we referring to? If you're considering this, the class, <laughs> just a live show we do every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And then throughout the week, I trickle out some, some other videos as well. If you buy one, <laughs> yeah, there we go. If I buy new chairs, I got to buy one, keep that for my son so he doesn't damage the new one. Absolutely. We got this chair at Goodwill for like 10 bucks, super comfortable, but it looks like crap. Yes, Rob nailed this one. I sell more with photos than I do with descriptions. I use that exact model. When I was teaching my guy, Ryan, how I like to list, he came from, he used to be an eBay lister for another person in town and they run a, a massive eBay business in town. But he came to work for me and he started doing our listing and he's like, how do you want your, your descriptions done? And I told him like absolute bare minimum pretty much. And he was shocked. And I, I explained that exact thing to him where I want photos to show the most amount of detail possible so that they don't need to take time to read a description, right? Because when I buy, that's how I, I buy too is I'm looking at photos way more than I'm reading descriptions. Because if, if you do a description and we describe, you know, scratches and dents and all that kind of stuff, we put in the listing. But for me as a buyer, if I'm reading scratch on upper right corner, like my brain doesn't process that. I need to see the scratch. Okay. I need to see the depth, the color. Like I need to see, see it with my own eyes. So that's why I'm a huge fan of that too, is photos will definitely uh, sell the product. Yes. Um, Rob also mentioned, don't always rely on white background. Sometimes it takes more work for the photo to look good. That is so true because I just went through a wave of a ton of shoes. We listed about 40 pair of shoes over the last couple of days and I've got a good amount of white shoes and they look like crap with the white background. So I'm going to do a wooden, like a palette look background for, especially for my white stuff. That's something I'm going to be doing too. Yeah, it just, it, it doesn't look good when you do white on white like that. <laughs> yeah, we'll call this re reselling 101 on Tuesdays. <laughs> 
Here's the thing, like reselling is a, such a simple business model. It's not difficult. The hard part is being consistent, finding products, um, taking care of all the, the logistics stuff. Consistency is the hardest part of, the, of this entire thing. Set, reselling is not a hard business. People make it out to be way more confusing than it actually is. It's not confusing at all. Yeah, stocks, stocks unhinged, <laughs> buy low, sell high. That's the, that's the nature of the game. The logistics and being consistent is where people try to get themselves confused, but we run a really easy business model. People are like, where do you find your electronics? I'm like, well, I go to thrift stores all the time. I'm going to find stuff. <laughs> people that are complaining that they're not finding stuff, they're probably not going more than twice a week. Or they might go every now and then. They go into one Goodwill and they're like, eh, it's really high price. And then they leave and they complain on Instagram that Goodwill is too high price because they went to one Goodwill and saw high prices. If you don't go out into these stores and lots of them consistently, you're not going to learn your region. I know which Goodwills in my area because I've been to all of them. We have 20 plus Goodwills within an hour drive, hour and a half. But because I've been in all of them multiple times, I know which ones have the best pricing. I know which days to go into certain ones because I found the most amount of great stuff on certain days. And I know which ones I don't even bother going into because I've been in them enough that I know that their prices are ridiculously high. They, they're they probably selling on eBay themselves. Um, but it's because I put in the practice and, and the time to do that. And I'm, I'm still new to this game. Like I've only been doing this three and a half years. You got guys in here like Rob. I mean, we're talking 20 plus years um, for some of these sellers. So of course they can walk in without using their phone, right? They didn't have, they didn't have the eBay app back in the day they can go search comps on. But it, it's all practice. Like the more you practice this stuff, the more consistent you are, the better you're going to be at it. It's not a hard thing to do. I think the, the hard part that not many people talk about is when you start to actually sell, you know, you're not just selling a couple hundred dollars a month, you're selling multiple thousands of dollars of, of product per month. Then it's like managing cash flow, figuring out how to get access to more product, more capital. Like those are what I consider logistics. That that stuff you need to start to, to work with. That takes a little bit more work. But the nature of the game, yeah, it's it's go find product that you can buy at a lower price than you can sell and you have enough wiggle room for margin after fees and shipping. It's not a hard, hard thing. Do I ever have live chats that start at six? I do not. Um, I used to, but I'm, I'm in this mode right now of just completely redoing my entire schedule because I've developed a bad habit of being a workaholic and I like to be at the office working late. Uh, when I say late, I'm talking like nine, 10 PM. I no longer am satisfied doing that because it, it, it at one point felt like a job and I just could not turn my brain off at night and I would be up until three in the morning. Be, not because I was playing video games or being lazy, but I just couldn't turn my brain off because I was allowing myself to be here till nine or 10 o'clock at night. And on top of that, I got a family that I gotta, I gotta be present with. And that's something that I didn't do in 2018. I've been open about that when I talk about it. Um, I was not present with my own family my own friends, my own personal life, my hobbies. I was not present in at all in 2018 because I was always on the road sourcing because I was doing a lot of retail arbitrage or I was here at the office late because my brain fires at night like I think a lot of entrepreneurs do. So we rescheduled everything recently. All of my shows start at five o'clock typically um, unless you're in our VIP group. That one is a 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. We do that. But I, I'm clocked out by 6.30, 7 o'clock nowadays. And uh, that means like all my work is done. I'm clocked out. I'll bring my computer home and work if I've got like projects I'm working on. Um, you know, anything that has a deadline, I'm bringing my computer home. But for the most part, I'm, I'm trying to be clocked out by 630. And especially because we have our second child on the way and she'll be here uh, by June 1st. So we're down to the final couple months and I can't be working until 9 p.m. at night and leave two kids at the house with the wife. So I'm uh, yeah I'm in this mode right now of um, trying to just get my time management like as on point as I can. And the other thing too with 6 p.m. shows is a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers do 6 p.m. shows. So I've bounced around, I've tried out different days, different times. I somehow was always overlapping with other people, and I want to respect other people's schedules 
that um, when I talk about other people, I'm talking about other YouTubers. I want to respect their times that they've allowed um, or not allowed, allotted inside of their schedule for their shows. So we landed on Tuesdays at five and we're going to cruise here. How did you get past the five item selling limit? You got to call. You got to, if you have a five selling limit, you got to sell five things, call them. I did a video on that not too long ago. Yeah, I got limited at 10 and my electronics account is only, it was last July. So my, my, I'm less than a year old on that account. So that must be a new thing with five. I was limited at 10. I sold about five items. I called them and they, they increased it. Uh, VIP group is currently closed. It's been shut down since, um, not shut down. It's been shut down to new members since November because we hit our, our limit, which is 250 members. We hit that cap and I closed it off completely for new members because we're taking that group of people and we're helping them scale their business. And then I'll open up for a new wave of people. Cause what we found was it, we had new people joining every single week and we were constantly repeating the same information every single week and then constantly helping the new people grow, which there's nothing wrong with. But when I've got people that are past the newbie phase and they want to get to 5K and 10K and 20K a month, I can't constantly be repeating the new information. So we're taking that group, helping them get to that 5 and 10K level. And then, I mean, you know, they're going to be growing, they're going to be scaling. And then we take another wave of, of fresh faces. So if you guys want in on the VIP group, um, we do have yeah, Martin VIP for life. We've got some of our VIPs in here. So if you guys want to be on the wait list, which we do have a wait list um, of people. I mean, the second I open that group back up, like it's going to be sold out in 24 hours. We've got a wait list for it. So you need to email me, Chaz, that's C-H-A-Z at sidehustlenetwork.com. And I can get you put on the wait list for that. Yeah, and that was, that was a tough decision because I love, like, there's just something when you get new members coming in, it's always like a fresh wave of, of energy, and I love that. So it was a tough decision to decide to close it off um, completely to the public, and we've just, we've just kept it like this core group that we have in there now. It's phenomenal. And it gives you time to really get to know people on a deeper level instead of just, like, new faces coming and, <clears throat> excuse me, coming and going all the time. Um, it's nice to have a core group of people that are there and as they're growing, you get to know them on a much more personal level. It's been, it's been great. And then you get to do cool stuff. Like I never thought that we'd have our VIP group all under the same roof inside of ASD at Vegas. We had a house with 15 members staying there and that was, that was awesome. That was one of the best trips we've ever done. <clears throat> I did not grab water. Oh, I got a cup here. Sweet. This was this was my my four year old's cup. Hopefully, you didn't have too many germs in that. How do you think I can find a lister and someone to take a picture? It depends if depends on your situation. Because I know I'm sitting next to a water cooler. <laughs> I know I always I don't know why I always feel bad when I'm like, hold on, guys, I got to leave and like go do something. Um, so it depends on your situation, because some people, you know, if you're doing eBay out of your house and you've got a family or young children, you don't really want to be bringing strangers in there. Right. So for us, it worked out where we hired somebody that our first we have two employees. Our first one I went to high school with. So we already had that level of like, oh, okay, I know you, you know me. It's not this awkward, weird thing to like interview. So she was able to come work out of our garage, which is where we started before we got the warehouse space. <coughs> Man, I got that like that itchy dry throat thing going on. So that's how we started. Our second employee came when we had the warehouse. So now it's like a dedicated workspace. So that wasn't an issue. But how I did the second one was most of most of your cities are going to have some type of buy, sell, trade group or like help wanted group. 
or jobs posting group. So we have a Facebook group here in town uh, called Yamhill County um, Help Wanted. So I, I simply put together a little, you can use Google Forms and put together a little application and treat it like you're a business owner hiring an employee for, for a position because you are. So I did this post inside this group and I had people fill out an application. We narrowed it down to our top ones. From there, I took them and we sat in Starbucks and we did interviews. And I mean, we tried a couple of them out and I had to fire a couple. And from there, we found one that was fantastic. And that's who we kept. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, when you're doing multiple platforms all by yourself, it's work. I just started Poshmark. I'm already like, shit, I got to like share and do all this closet stuff now. Like it's a lot of work to do everything yourself. <coughs> I never get dry throats. I don't know what's going on here. Ah, oh, Sean, man, thank you so much for the super chat. He said, thanks so much for the info. It's been super helpful as we got started. How much would you say that you work on Amazon versus eBay? Right now is a lot more eBay because I'm not doing retail arbitrage at the moment. Um, I find myself almost bored. I, bored isn't the right word, but it's the closest word I can think of. Because what I'm doing now is wholesale. So I put in a wholesale order. Let's say I spend $2,000 on a wholesale order. It takes about three to four weeks to get here because I'm ordering um, from the manufacturer level. So it takes three to four weeks to get here. And then I place a couple more orders with other vendors. You know, let's say a thousand with vendor two and 2000 with vendor three. So I'm waiting for wholesale orders to come in. And there's not much I'm doing with Amazon aside from that. I'm doing a lot more checking my repricer, uh, you know, checking my daily feedback, account health, all that kind of stuff. So eBay's where where my focus has been. That's a lot more of the busy work. <coughs> oh, I really hope this goes away. This does not feel good. I work full time. Would OA be more effective than RA? Yes. Online arbitrage definitely would be more effective. Retail arbitrage, I love it to death. I, I I still am a treasure hunter. I love to get out in the stores, but it's so freaking time consuming. <laughs> it's the most time consuming method out there. Do I do free shipping on shoes? Yes. Yeah, and again, this is totally just going to be a comfort and risk thing. Like if you're not comfortable hiring somebody to come into your home, don't do it. Um, you're, I mean, you're going to have to stick with like family and friends, people that you trust to come in and do that and help you. But that's, that's just how we did it. We did the whole interview process. We met with people at Starbucks, interviewed, hired a few, fired a few. Um, and then we hired the third one and he happened to be amazing at what he does. And he's very open for feedback and how I like things done. Um, and he's the one that, that we're working with and he's going to be here a while. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with hiring friends as long as you create firm boundaries from the beginning. It's when you allow, it's when you, it's when you start the working relationship with no boundaries is where things can get messy. So that's completely going to be different for, for each of you. <laughs> Martin, hit the thumbs up. Yeah, if you guys enjoy the content, if you guys enjoy the time that we put into the channel here helping you guys out, do us a huge favor, hit the thumbs up button. It does help get the videos up in the search engines, all that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> speak to the noobs about not chasing down the buy box or lowest price. Um, I'm going to do a video inside that FBA for Begin Beginners series I'm doing. I've got a video up here on my whiteboard um, which is talking about pricing, pricing methods, what not to do, what to do, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, make sure you keep your interviews at a safe place. So we always do coffee shops for our stuff. Yeah, retail arbitrage at Starbucks, heck yeah. Especially if you guys ever travel, always, always, always look at those mugs. The mugs, the tumblers, those are great. <clears throat> Stock City takes their... Five bucks coffee over to McDonald's and resells it for 10. That's one way to do some RA. 
I'm confused about OA. What kind of sites do I use? <clears throat> Ones where there's products. <laughs> TJ's, it, it sounds like you're new to OA. So here's a tip. You're never going to get an answer when you ask what sites people are using because it's taken time for us to find the good sites and it's taken a lot of money for us to find the good sites. Um, I mean, you've got your typical ones, which are going to be walmart.com, target.com, Kohl's, et cetera. Uh, the big retailers are where everyone starts and I recommend you start there. You're going to deal with a lot more competition on those sites because they're the easy ones. Yep. Google.com is another, another fantastic resource. Um, and it's not that when I, when we reply, when we reply back with those kind of answers, it's not because we're trying to be an ass. It's because we we're not going to give up suppliers. It's like when I post my wholesale orders and people are like, Oh, who's your supplier? Like you really think I'm going to give up my supplier that took me a long time to establish a relationship with not going to happen. Um, but I can tell you this with online arbitrage, the not so big websites are going to be your honey holes. If you can find the websites that are not mainstream big box retailers, that's it's same thing with retail arbitrage. If you get out of the major chain retail stores and you find some of these smaller regional stores that you may have access to, that's where you're going to be able to find some really good stuff. I know I'm such a I'm such a mean human being. <laughs> what software should I use with OA besides Keepa? Cora is a good repricer. Oh, I, I think you mean Aura. Um, so Aura is the repricer that we use and we actually did partner with them because it was that good. Um, I was not a fan of paying $200 a month for some of the other big guys, big guys. Um, so yeah, Aura is the repricer that we use and we're currently partnered with. Uh, we do have a 20% off code for them as well. If, if you need that, just shoot me an email, chaz at sidehustlenetwork.com. <clears throat> Uh, but aside from software, uh, we also use tactical arbitrage is another one that we're a big fan of. How many items do you have selling on eBay and Amazon? Amazon, I've got like 300 SKUs. That's not total items. That's just how many different items. Some of those items I have a couple hundred units of. Um, so I think we've got, last time I checked was a few weeks ago, we had like 1,200 items total. But we have about 300 different SKUs. Uh, eBay, we've got about 200 listings, up, not quite 200, but almost 200 listings up on the electronics account. On the shoes and clothing account, we have just shy of 700 listings. <clears throat> yeah, Lowe's, Lowe's is, a, is definitely a good place to start sourcing too. Lowe's is one of those places where it's, it's a big chain store pretty much in every single state, I believe. <clears throat> but they've got legit good deals in there if you go in consistently. Yeah, those that have not bought and sold wholesale don't realize how difficult it is to find a good supplier. It's like gold. No one is going to tell you where their gold money is. Nope. I I, I don't mind teaching people methods um, and resources all day long, but when it comes to actual suppliers, like you're, you're just not going to get that info. And if you do, it's going to be oversaturated because it's probably just thrown out there. Like you get these, you know, wholesale websites that give you like, here's the top 10 wholesalers you can go purchase from. You might luck out and find a few things, but that's not going to be a consistent relationship, um, that you're going to establish. Yeah, there you go. Check eBay for 20 off of 100 Lowe's coupons. I watched that video that you guys did with the Aura guys. They seem like the best to me. Yeah, um, James and Dylan, I mean, they are legit dudes. Um, they're like, they're just, they're, they're those guys. Like you just, you, you watch them on video and like you hear what they're, what they're about. And you just want to, you want to jump on that ship with them. They're, they're phenomenal. Yeah, same way you don't tell anyone your fishing spot. That is very true. That is very true. You're you're gonna you're gonna talk about you know which lure you're gonna ask questions like which lure did you use? You know you're talking about the line. You're talking you're talking about the different you know the the tools that were used, maybe the methods, but yeah, the spot. Yeah, not not quite. Do you generally continue? 
to play with the price on an eBay item until it sells or have you ever pulled an item down? I've pulled items down. Um, I'm getting ready to do a wave of pulling items down because we're going to do a big garage sale out of out of the warehouse. So we're going to call it a big warehouse sale here in a few weekends. So if you're around the McMinnville area, we're going to host a big warehouse sale. Um, so that's a great opportunity, kind of open invite if you want to if you want to come down to the office, check things out, um, hang out with us for a day. So in a couple weekends, the weekends of April 12th, I believe, we're going to do a big warehouse sale. So I'm going to pull down just stuff that I've lowered enough to where it's not worth the time or it's not worth the money for me to pay my employee to ship it out. I'm just going to pull that stuff and then I'm going to uh, throw it up in our warehouse sale. But yeah, it happens. And then um, as far as my pricing on eBay, usually every Sunday night or like Monday morning, I'll sit down and I'll just go over you know, which items have a lot of watchers and I'll, I'll, now I can throw out an offer to those watchers, but usually I would drop the price a few bucks because it notifies them. So I'm looking at which items have the most amount of watchers first and I'm, I'm focusing on those. And then I'm looking at which items do I have the biggest margin on? Because if I've got an item that I paid five and it's listed for 25, I don't have a lot of wiggle room in that one. So I'm just going to kind of keep it around that 20 to 25 range. But if I have an item I bought for five and it's listed for 80, I have wiggle room to drop down to 70 or 65 and still make a, make a really, really good ROI on that. So it really just depends on um, your margins that you have on your, your items. But once a week I'll, I'll sit down and check that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you guys got stuff you want to liquidate, bring it on down. We'll do a multi, we'll do a multi resellers warehouse sale. All right. I do need to use my, my water cooler. Now. This is Rob behind the scenes. Going to the stores is a better saving than the site. It just depends because you also have to look at the time that you're putting into it. Those that don't have as much time are going to get a better deal ordering online. The downfall with OA and ordering online is the lead time for shipping. Because if I have an item that's selling like wildfire right now, I can go to a store and pick it up and ship it into Amazon today. And I'm going to make that sale before me ordering online. And it takes, you know, three to five days to get here and then ship it in. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to both. Um, ideally you can do both. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we've done the last couple of years. Were you saying you have a different eBay account for electronics and clothes benefits of doing so? Um, it's just for separation. And I honestly only started that for my own accountability because he, so there's a couple reasons why I created the separate eBay account just for electronics, because the main account is like toys and uh, shoes and clothing. For the most part, we'll throw in some random other stuff in there, but for the most part, the, the heart of it is shoes and clothing. I was tossing up my electronics and my toner and calculators and all that stuff, no problem. But I wanted to do a challenge where I took a hundred bucks and I showed and I document how to turn that into 10,000, um, which is still going phenomenal. And so that's why I needed a separate account because I couldn't track the expenses easily if it was all mixed in with our other money too. So I wanted ever, I wanted a different PayPal account, its own debit card I can buy, buy product with. All that kind of stuff went on its own separate account. And then I found found that I actually like doing that because now I have followers on that account that know I, I focus just primarily on electronics. So now I have several repeat buyers on there. And I don't think those repeat buyers are going to want to follow a shoes and clothing focused store with a few electronics being posted. They're focusing on that, that new account because they know it's going to be electronics only. Um, so that's been, that's been another reason why I did it. I don't know if that's a legit thing, but I definitely noticed I got some repeat buyers on there, especially for toner. Um, I've got toner that I post that it's like, I'll even price it high, higher than I think it will sell just so I can collect some watchers. And it's like these repeat businesses are, are buying my stuff. Yeah. 132 people watching only 42 thumbs up. Got to get those, get those numbers up. Uh, 
Uh, check my DMs. I'll check my no, prop. Maybe tonight. I'll see. My DMs are are definitely backed up. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I got a wave of like the last week. It's like I just got this wave of new messages have been coming in. Kind of goes through waves. Sometimes I don't get many messages on Instagram or or different things like that. And then other times it's just like, which is great. You know, I love to interact with you guys. But if I if you do have a message in my inbox and I haven't gotten back to you, just know like I've I've got hundreds in here and I'm constantly working through them. You know, and I'm 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 a one man show in the inbox. I do all all of our social media. That's 100% me. I have not outsourced anything social media. Messages I'll never outsource. I feel like that just loses its own touch. Because I could easily outsource, you know, I've got a team around us now. I could outsource some message stuff, but it just loses the personal touch. Are you allowed to have multiple eBay accounts? Yeah. Sure can. Uh, how did you get ungated on shoe brands on Amazon since you didn't start until 2016? Um, brand gatings didn't exist until 2017 hold on I'm trying to remember my timeline it was either summer i remember specifically it was july 2016 or it was july 2017 i don't remember the exact year but i was i was grandfathered in and then the brands that i was not i i did get restricted in i've been um auto approved in because i've i've got some metrics but yeah, brand gatings were not a thing when I first started my Amazon account. Pretty much you can walk into Walmart. There were, I mean, Mattel, Fisher-Price, Disney, Star Wars, all that stuff. Anyone could sell, no problem. And then they came out with all the brand gatings. It started with Nike was the first one. We saw a big wave hit. That was the July one. I don't remember if it was 2016 or 2017. But I remember getting into my car going for a Nike trip and I, all the Facebook groups blew up that day. <laughs> Nike's, Nike's restricted, blah, blah, blah. Um, and shortly after that, all these other brands started to trickle in and, and do that. Hey, there we go. We got an extra one. Much appreciated. Good tips. Do you think it's worth it to cut your site traffic into two spots? I've wondered that. You know, there's there's obviously power in something when you focus all your energy on one thing. I'm a, I'm a believer that you're going to do way better focusing your energy on one thing. And, and this is for a, pretty much every aspect of life. If you focus all your energy on one thing, that's going to help you out tremendously versus splitting your attention into two different things. Um, so that I've been I've been debating um, if if that's actually hurting our view counts. I'm not sure, but if anyone has experience with doing, going to two accounts and then going back to one, and if you saw a benefit, I'd be super curious to have that conversation. And that that's why I like to do this YouTube channel, by the way, and we've got the sun's coming down, so you're going to see some weird lighting going on. <laughs> um, that's why I like doing this YouTube channel because I, you know, I don't do the most polished, fancy, fun looking videos right? I don't have the most like upbeat, fun personality, but I'm, I like to do this YouTube channel, just my own accountability and just being raw and transparent and documenting the journey because I'm not an expert in a lot of this stuff. I'm just somebody who's figured out what works for me and I'm just going with the flow. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And as I see, I need to adjust things and try new things out because I'm 100% open for trying out pretty much anything in this whole reseller world. Um, it's just going one one day at a time and trying out what I can. Can you have multiple accounts with the same email? That's actually a good question. I do not know the answer to that. I've I just created a separate email, so I have no I haven't tried it. Yeah, that's one thing. I am a huge fan of multiple streams of income. I always have been. And that's why we've never claimed. <laughs> Hold on. I don't have my uh my admin in the chat, so I got to do my own my own moderating for some of this. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, we 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 had a troll pop in, so <laughs> got that dingero. Um, yeah, I've I've never once claimed to to be a full time reseller alone. I've always been open with you guys about multiple streams of income. Reselling is just a chunk of it, 
Um, and now it's something where we're turning into a full-time income. That's why we're pushing so hard. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of multiple streams because I've, I've dealt with one, my prior career as a massage therapist and a personal trainer, we, I had waves of clients where it's like summer times would be really, really busy and they were phenomenal. And then winter time, like I couldn't pay my bills because like I was relying just on that one income. And then that's when I figured out about this whole like reselling world and Amazon came into play. And then I found some different services that we can provide. And we just launched some stuff to where it's now we have a consistent monthly income from multiple different sources. We don't have any one chunk of income that's far superior than the other. So if, if one chunk of income got swiped out, like if, if Amazon got swiped out from underneath us and we weren't able to sell, hold on, <laughs> we weren't able to sell on Amazon anymore, it would hurt. It would definitely take some recovery time, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't die from it. Okay. Same thing with eBay or any of our other services that we have as well. Um, and that's just the why that that's why I wanted to get into multiple streams of income was just for more consistency. Because if you focus on one thing, you can grow it to a large substantial amount, but the risk is a lot higher when you're only focusing on one thing. That's just my personal opinion. That's what we personally do. Some people don't agree with it. Totally fine. I believe what make work for you doesn't work for my store. I think you just have to try different things to works for your store. Absolutely. I've said that too, is I think too many people rely on YouTubers and Instagram influencers and all these people to model how a business should be run. And then they try to mimic it exactly how the other person does it. It's not going to work out that way each person is going to have their own style of running a business. And it's up to you to watch YouTube videos, watch Instagram influencers, take bits and pieces of what you like about what they're doing and craft it into your own method of doing your business. I see too many people are like, they want to know exactly how I source, exactly how I ship, exactly how I do this and that. It's like, you can take everything that I do. I can give you a step-by-step -step guide on everything I do in all, in all of our businesses. I can give you an, a step-by-step -step guide in all of it. You may take my blueprint and go fail. Okay. Or you may take, so I can take your blueprint and fail. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to craft your own blueprint. Yeah. You're going to take nugget from YouTube and different places like that, but you've got to learn to craft and it's all trial and error. It's all experience. You got to use trial and error. Awesome, John. Say so he's going to be signing up for the VIP group when we got spots open. Um, I don't know when spots are going to be open. I don't know if it's going to be in a month, in three months. I'm not sure. Um, it's not really something on my radar at the moment because I'm. We're, I love where our our current group is right now. We've got some people that are just freaking like. We've got a couple people that have. I've watched them start like they didn't know anything about Amazon when they came into the group, and now they're doing 50k a month. Like it's been so freaking cool on my side as somebody who created the group and and leads the group that's the best like my job is done that is absolutely the best awesome max profits and thanks for all your help thank you so much for the super chat <laughs> martin's in here who would that be no it's been that like that is why i do this stuff that's why i i create services because i love to watch when that type of growth happens, because here's the, here's the reality you get he, people have oftentimes asked me, how come I put up all of this information on YouTube for free? Okay. I could easily just slap a five or a $10 monthly subscription on this YouTube channel and people would pay it. Okay. I can make thousands and thousands of dollars per month on it, but I choose not to. And people are always asked, how can you give out all this information for free? Aren't you creating your own competition? If I've got a thousand people watch a video, there's really going to be maybe five that do something with it. That's just the reality. <laughs> so when I got a couple of people inside of a group that go through and take the information that's given, they just they soar with it and it's phenomenal. That makes up for all the times that I've tried to work with people and they just, they don't have the passion for it. Oh, we got another one already. 
Hold on. Got to get rid of the trolls. <laughs> the funny part is I can name who the trolls are. Like if you, if you gave me, I, if you gave me 10 tries, I could probably name who all the trolls are. <laughs> I've been playing around with how I do my descriptions. What all do you include? I copy and I do the lazy way. I'll admit it. I do the lazy way. I copy and paste my title and then I'll also add condition notes and that's it. So if it's got scratches, if it's got missing pieces, if it's been tested, untested, I include all that stuff in there. <laughs> you got the same thing on your stock chat board. Yeah. It's part of being a content creator. It doesn't matter if you run a podcast, a YouTube channel, on Instagram. You're like The second you cross a certain amount of followers, the trolls are going to chase you down. It's just part of it. Trolls, what are trolls? Trolls can be a couple of different things, but primarily they're people who are just going to come onto your channel to mess with you. They can be haters who just don't like you as a person or your personality, or they can be people that don't like you and also want to mess with you. And so they create fake accounts, come on here and just troll. But I used to take it so personally. And uh, I've just learned like you you can't take you can't take this stuff personally. You just can't. Oh, awesome. It's a uh, was it Colleen? Kayleen? Colleen? Said it was nice to meet you at the Las Vegas trade show. Yeah, it was great to meet you guys. Yeah, or spammers. You get those ones too. All right, my friends. I am going to hop off of here. Speaking of getting more listings done, I've got five. I've got a personal goal. I'm trying. So my my employee Ryan is listing every day on our account, but I've also got my own goal because we've got a giant pile of stuff to work through. I've I've got my own goal that when I leave the office every day, I take five photos. Not, I mean, I take photos of five items. So it's like, you know, six to eight photos of each item. But I take five item photos and then I go home and I list them. So I'm going to go take my five photos. And aside from that, I've got a little one and a wife at the house. So I'm going to go put my feet up and relax for the evening. Uh, I've never ran auctions actually. So buy it now. And obviously eBay's, wanting us to all do buy it now. So not really a choice on that one. Uh, TJ's fantastic said, I'm sorry. It's just hard to be motivated whenever you can't source and I've already lost money and so much time. I feel you. Um, and it sucks to say, but that's just, that's the nature of being a business owner. You're going to get punched in the face a lot more than you're going to win. <laughs> um, it's not, it's not for everybody. And that's the thing. And that's why a lot of people start and within six months they're gone. I've, I've, I've been in this for three and a half years, which isn't a long time, but it's long enough to have seen thousands of people, thousands of names pop up in this chat for like six months and then they just disappear. I never see them again. Maybe they just unsubscribe from the channel or they just stop reselling. But, um, yeah, being a business owner of any business, not just reselling, being a business owner, like it, it sucks in some, in a lot of ways. It sucks if you make if you make a pros and cons list. There's going to be a long cons list, but the pros list is so much more powerful. No matter how long the cons list is, the pros list is going to be so much more powerful that it makes everything worth it. The fact that I get to clock out right now, which is six thirty p.m. my time. I'm going to clock out. I'm going to take my five photos. That's going to take like 10 minutes. I'm going to take my photos. I'm going to clock out and I'm going to go home and chill with my family. When I had my last job as a massage therapist, I got to clock out at 8 PM and then I had a 45 minute drive home and I was booked during weekends and summers. I didn't have a life. So yeah, the pros of owning my own time and having the time freedom. I'll, I don't, I'll, I'll take as many punches as I can get. I'll get knocked down every single day, but I own my time. I don't report to anybody. That's why it's worth it for me. But aside from that, peace out crew. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like comment, subscribe to the channel. 
We'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned because by Friday, if you're watching the recording, it's probably already up. We're doing an epic giveaway. We've got a ton of sponsors that are going to hook you guys up with some amazing prizes. So it's going to be a huge video. I'm really excited for it. So we'll see you guys next time. Um, if you need to get a hold of me for any reason, I am pretty active in my inbox, both on Instagram, which is the side hustle network dot or I was gonna say dot com. <laughs> uh, the side hustle network on Instagram email is Chaz C H A Z at side hustle network.com. All this information in the description below. Peace out. We'll see you next time guys.